Uh, Welcome back. Just a little late today, but whatever. <laughs> we do what we want. Um, so, you all got a mandate from one of the gods to uh, recover the Herald of uh, Iomede. And you guys decided to go shopping, and there were some things that went on, and we also had some stuff in the mid-session talking about um, who to bring. So, um, have you all decided on who you want to bring? I would just like to first point out how on brand it is that we describe this as you were given a mandate from the gods and you go shopping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I agree with uh, what seems to be the general consensus of Erebeth and Anivia. Okay. Anybody else have any other inputs? Uh, definitely Erebeth and uh, for the safe harbor and uh, words are failing because I'm doing things. But yes, the, the same thing. I agree. I think uh, Erebeth especially because I just like, you hear like to hear you doing the gruff work female voice. <laughs> leaves fate to what the other party members choose. Mainly because I read all that. <laughs> yes. Isn't that much to read. Do I have a chance to? So, um, Saucy also provided you guys two scrolls of True Res, uh, a scroll of Planar Ally, four scrolls of Plane Shift, um, and then... Corgus granted a stipend of 10,000 GP each to each of you to purchase supplies. Okay, I missed, Yay. The, I missed the scrolls. What were those? They are under Saucial in the, in the mid session RP list. Okay. the ion stone too be an item bonus do the skills page uh, where are the plane shifts targeted to or is that you get to pick it when you use it you get to pick depending on what what you're hitting the, the thing with Greater Planner Ally, huh? Hmm. Oh. Oh. We definitely should stock up on supplies. After all, it's the entire realm of one giant maze. I can't imagine it would be easy to find food and drink there. All my research points to it being a good idea to find ways to navigate. Hopefully we can find some guides there. I was about to say, we'll either need to sell, uh uh, get our own food supplies or uh, rely on like magical means of food creation. Uh, water we should have no difficulty with. After all, we still have the that decanter that never runs dry. Mm -hmm. Sufficient amount of food rations would probably be advisable.
wouldn't help to have a bit of bread. Perhaps leave some breadcrumbs along our way. Ah, uh, the classic toes. Let's see their letter chalk. Um, I'm trying to to differentiate between player and character knowledge here. What do I? What did we determine about navigating the maze? In terms of means of travel? Uh, let me get what you guys had. Let's see here. If I remember right, don't fly above the maze because something bad happens. Right. Okay, good. That's established. Uh, uh, most things travel via teleportation. Good. Cool. Which is why we got the plane shifter on my uh, bow. Yeah, the phase lock thing. Yes. I expect that even more so than regular demon kind, denizens of this realm will be quite adept at bamfing, so to speak. The Ivory Labyrinth is a lair of the abyss ruled by Baphomet, a sprawling maze of the world the true size of which has never been able to be able to determine, for it seems to fold back on itself, shifting and growing randomly. Navigation in that ivory labyrinth is difficult, but not impossible. One experienced in trailblazing navigation and planar geography can navigate the labyrinth to known locations, providing the traveler does so within the rules of the maze and doesn't attempt to cheat by flying the labyrinth's walls. Teleportation offers the easiest method of travel, provided the teleporter knows the location he wishes to visit. Entire mountain ranges, vast forests, sprawling underground tangles, swamps, plains of bones, and more terrible expanses exist within the Ivory Labyrinth, including two sprawling cities, Blackburg and Echostal. Of these two, Blackburg is the realm's capital, and the city's heart rises and at the city's heart rises the Baphomet's Tower. Blackburg can be thought as the center of the Ivory Labyrinth that is here that most likely to learn of current events in the realm. The Ivory Labyrinth was once designed by Asmodeus, a prison that contained Baphomet, but when Baphomet escaped it, he took it with him into the Abyss to make it his home. A fraction of the original prison is said to be hidden deep within the maze realm in the Breathless Fountains, the so-called inelectable prison where Baphomet keeps his favorite prisoners. The prison is shielded from magical observation from beyond its walls, even from the sights of the god himself. There's a few things. Well, I think it seems to re stands to reason that we should try to f uh, find ourselves in Blackburg. Get our bearings from there. Seems sufficient. Me. Are there any last uh, instructions from the, the staff in Brezen? Or for them, for that matter? If, we, if we're taking Yurabeth with us, who's going to run the keep? The queen. That is true. Hmm. Or how Irabeth feels about that. I think it's already been decided. I was also, yeah, that was part of the, the RP. Yeah, I know. Reading it out. <laughs> Verbalizing it. Ah. <laughs> oh, in any case. Uh, do they have their own supplies, or do we need to provide for them? We'll be able to support ourselves. I just need to make sure that you all form a beachhead before we head in. Ah, uh, you'd best uh, pr give us uh, an hour after we leave. We're not certain how time might differ, the flow of it from here and there. If there's any resistance to be met, I'm sure we'll, we'll deal with it in short order.
And here's where we begin the arduous task of buffing. Did you say buffing? Yes, buffing. Now, are we going back into the Midnight Isle area? Or is this another thing entirely? Entirely new area. It is an abyssal realm, so you will be fighting uh, evil outsiders. Most likely. It's just a Asking different... for the favorite terrain. Because yeah. I don't need no 22. We'll almost certainly be fighting evil outsiders. Because we're going to a realm of the abyss. The home of demons. I was about to say, if you want, though... Uh, since we did level up at the end of that last book, you could use the uh, the retrain to retrain your uh, favorite terrain for the Midnight Isles to the, um, the Ivory, Ivory Labyrinth. Labyrinth. Is that a thing I can do? Zach? Yes, you can spend time to be able to retrain. Huzzah! Would I have enough in those three days? After upgrading my bow. Requires eight hours of work. So I believe yes. I'm just picturing like a, a training montage with like cardboard layouts of hedge mages. <laughs> Learning how to navigate them. <laughs> yes. Okay, so what is the new one? Then the Ivory, Ivory Labyrinth. Picture an entire world. Like, you, you know, like, pictures of Coruscant from Star Wars, like the main capital planet? It's just one giant city. The entire planet. Picture that, but it's just one big maze. The entire thing. Fair enough. Everyone is getting um, mythic heroism. Let me just type these out. Uh, does uh, yeah. does Yuhia still benefit from a, a holy enchanted weapon? Or is that not needed anymore? I get extra damage, but it doesn't help against damage reduction since I already have all my attacks counting as good. Okay, I'll, I'll leave off on that then to save some resources. Not a problem. Uh, does that benefit Bosco or uh, Joran to have a holy enchantment? Joran has one already, but thank you. Um, Let me check. It would effectively be a plus three and holy, if your weapons are lower than plus three. Uh, weapons already count as plus five, but I wouldn't turn down an extra 2d6, but that's up to you. Okay. Uh, I'll forego that for the moment until we find out what kind of uh, resource drain we're going to be looking at. So what are you guys doing now? So what's the next step to get to um, this main shift? All right. Well, are you ready? Uh, also, um, hi, big ribble. Howdy. So, everyone's got mythic heroism, everyone's got life bubble, everyone, I have a bunch of personal things, and everyone also has stone skin. Alrighty. I'll uh, preemptively throw up my uh, eagle soul.
I'll get the numbers out for mirror image and false life once we get there. It's easier when I have a token to work with. Okay. So I'll just to double check all the buffs. Smite's not one of them, if I remember correctly, correct? Uh, not yet. Yeah, I can't throw that up until I see someone I want to put the smite on. Okay, so Mythic Heroism. I heard that mm -hmm. one. Life Bubble, though that's not really a stat that you like need to enable on your page. It's more... You know, be aware it's there. Yeah. Trust me, I'll okay. remind folks when that comes up. And you've also got Stone Skin. <laughs> Inspire Courage probably is not up. Oh no, stop zooming. Not what? what? I was supposed to... So push to talk is control, and if I try to scroll while I'm on the web browser, it zooms in and zooms out. That seems to be one... a poor choice for push to talk. <laughs> one of the better keys I can recommend for a push to talk is the tilde key. Tilde key actually makes any kind of characters display on the screen, which is a problem. Yeah. Yeah, I can't really. either. Yeah, so uh, it, a mouse button if you're typically is the best. One of your mouse uh, buttons is typically the best for that. So my two bu buttons on the side literally make the page go back and forward. So it refreshes the web browser, which is why I had trouble a few nights before I switched this. That sounds like a you problem. <laughs> so, I don't know if you do. Anyway, um, buffs list. <laughs> Mythic Heroism, Life Bubble. I don't think we have Stone Skin this time, do we? Yes, we do. I don't have a buff for that. Um, it, it's another one that you just gotta keep track of somewhere. I think I'm set then, unless there's anything else I need to actually click on my current buff set list. I don't believe so. Since you upgraded your bow, I don't need to be uh, throwing an enchantment your way for that, so we're fine there. Sounds good. I'm ready when you need to then. <laughs> uh, if anyone... If any of the Divine Casters are buffing themselves and need spell slots, please let me know. I Primarily my... goes towards Paladins and, and Clerics in the group. I think the one spell I've cast on myself is actually out of your range. Okay. So it's a fourth. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I could use a third level for All my right. investments. Here you go. Thank you very much. And I do believe that is it. So I believe uh, Jorn is the plane shifter of choice here. All right, he will uh, make this make a spectacle out of it. Everyone will have to anoint themselves in oils and incense. The divine, the divine version of this is so much more complicated. We like our ceremonies. Uh, I guess. There'll be a bit of chanting, and then off we go. So reality foul folds out of play, and you seem to be in all directions all at once, and um, suddenly you see a world just seemingly pop out of the ground and collapse around you, forming a, uh, basically a courtyard around you, and you appear in this map, once I get everything over there. This larger chamber measures about 100 feet across and has a vaulted ceiling that rises to a similar height. A sphere of bright light shines above, almost like a miniature sun, casting brilliant illumination down into the room below. Patches of thick green ivy cling to the walls, while a pool of water flanked by two curving ivory benches sits in the center of the room. Numerous archers 
archways, and doors on the walls provide access to tunnels and chambers beyond. But the walls, floor, and ceiling that demand the most attention, for all those are formed by thousands of bones, skulls, femurs, ribs, and more, harvested all from humanoids and beasts, packed together in a dense, osseous patchwork. Oh, the name certainly fits. Uh, the Ivory Labyrinth. Our research skipped on that particular detail. Ivory of Bones. Well, let us be on our guard. Looking around, he immediately spots someone coming from the southeast. Oh, we have company already. It's greetings. What have you come to the Ivory Labyrinth for? I know those voices. Those are the fly-headed things, aren't they? That looks like yes. Jerome backs up a step. Reed makes a point of not standing in a row next to everyone else. We seek the return of something that your lord has taken from us. Our lord, our lord, our mistress has not taken anything from you. Mistress? Whom do you serve? Not oh. uh, my guess would be her. Look, my friends, look at what's fallen into our laps. Have they are they not the most delightfully ridiculous creatures? Well, we came because Oh, Marilith. Gotta love him. Some was stolen from our realm and brought here to the labyrinth. Welcome to the labyrinth. Swear your undying love for Lord Baphomet, and I shall grant you access to the labyrinth. But oh, please, do tell me you're not friends of the Horned Lord. I'm always looking for fresh slaves, and you reek of mortal foolishness. Few things I like more than disappointing a demon. Jorn will uh, draw his blade, get okay, ready for let's battle. Start this thing then. Oh, that certainly didn't take long. Of course. First roll of the evening are two net ones. Guys, just putting that out there. <laughs> I guess it's good that you got rid of them already, huh? <laughs> True. It's also a good thing, considering I'm one of those weird oddball mages that don't actually like going first. Too close for the nuclear option. Huh. 
Let's see if the API is crashed. Would not surprise me. Just a moment, I want to step away. Hmm? So if we have a moment, I'm just going to step away just for a second. I'll be like two minutes or less. It's Pathfinder. We probably have 15 minutes before we get to that part of the initiative order. Yeah. There we go. Alright, so this guy is speed on fly. Oh, okay. Flies over there and casts haste on the four of them over here. This guy is, um, let's see. Oh, um, let's see, droning wings. Oh, this makes standard action. So he's gonna go ahead and fly over to the middle. And use a standard action. All creatures within 30 feet, which is now everybody, make a will save. Nature of the effect? It is droning wings. You'll be slowed. I can get it if you want. Go for it. Okay, so let's see. What is the save in this? Okay, so everybody's fine. Let's see. But it does give them other things, so. Bosco, your turn. Right, Bosco's going to make a knowledge check to. I mean, if these things, all the things we're fighting here, has uh, spell resistance. Okay. Uh, you know that the Kaloxix has spell resistance, at the very least. Okay. Um, I'm going to need another planes check for the other, other chick. Oh, wait, there's another one? <laughs> Yeah, there's the Galaxis, so you know, as spell resistance. The other thing, you have no idea because you haven't rolled yet. Hmm? I haven't rolled yet? I've only seen one planes check. I need planes check for the second one. Oh, you? I'm rolling for separately? Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, you would know that it has spell resistance. It also has damage reduction, good, and cold iron. Um, it has combat reflexes, obviously. Um, and it can disarm pretty quickly and deal a fuck ton of damage. Alright, so Bosco is going to start out by casting Shadow Bard. Uh, 
basically creates a shadow bard of him that comes into uh, existence with uh, the bardic performance Inspire Greatness, which is going to be on Bosco and Yuhia. Um, let me... So... So Bosco gains 10 temp HP, Yuya gains 20 temp HP, and our hit dice both go up by 2. Coolio. And then as a move action, Bosco is going to use... Um, sorry, it's been a while. Martial Prowess to give himself Star Toss uh, style. And then five foot step. Okay, you here? What you doing? Alrighty. Uh, you here is gonna five foot step over next to this Colossus, and I don't have a buff readily available for the uh, the Inspire Greatness, so these are gonna be at plus two. Okay. All right. Let's see. Colossus. You said all these are plus two. Um, I need to see more for that uh, natural one up there. Okay. Obviously, a forty is going to hit. The forty is going to crit confirm. Um, let's see. DC 25, 3, so it's going to need a Fortitude save. It's 20. It's not staggered. Um, well, it is staggered for one round, so let's do that. Okay. Um, let's see, so it's going to take that damage, and then 47 is going to hit, 52 is going to hit, crit confirm, and it's going to the fort save. How many hits? Fine. Um, the 33 is going to miss, and the rend. Uh, looks like three hits. Also, Mackenzie, why is Cetra damaged? Oh, just not healed Cetra. up from last time. I was say, it kind of looks like your health bar is a little down. There you go. Okay, anything else? Uh, nope. That's it for me. Scroll up and hit the button. Reed, what are you doing? All right, uh, Reed is going to do some crowd control here. Step into sight, because uh, lighting is weird in here. And pointing at the Marilith, he is going to attempt to uh, enchain her. It does not affect her at all. Okay, then that does not happen. Burna Swift. Eh, you know, screw it. Cold Ice Strike to the the flyboy to the southwest of me. This guy here? Yeah. Sounds good. Um, Bing, yes, pass that there. And I need a reflex, and you'll probably hit the Odink at the same time. Let's see, checking SR 28. Yes, it's fine. Um, so I need reflexes for both of them, and does she have evasion? Uh, she, it doesn't reach her, it's only 30 feet. Oh, okay, so. Okay, so the Phloxus needs a reflex save of plus 24. Yep, so half, which is 33 cold damage. 
expected that to be safe. And but 23 full damage. Damage isn't bad. Yep. Yeah. Be careful. It seems she can't be held. Do you have SR over there, Reed? Nope. Okay. Uh, let's see. She is going to do telekinesis on... Um, yeah, it seems like Cetra is the best one to do it. I don't know. Sees that you're a caster and is probably best to try to use... Um, yeah, shift. So let's find out how much. What's your CMD over there, Mr. Reed? Oh, CMD? Yep. 29? Rarely ever enough. Okay, so she's able to move you 15 feet in a direction, so she chooses to bull rush you in this direction. All right. And then... She's going to move up to here. Oh dear. Then this guy over here is sees that is that's gonna happen and I wish they had different effects on that one, but Points at so flies over here, points etc., and says, uh, "Will safe versus confusion." Put your back. Yep, she is. I'm here. Which, because of the book she's holding, she does get a plus four on. Which they have no idea that exists, so they're still doing it. All right, so you're fine. You're not confused. This one is going to step up and is going to place. Where is my helpers? So that's going to encompass. Oops, that's not right. And so, Cetra, Yuhia, and Joran, I need a will save. You guys have air bubble, don't you, on there? Yep. Yep. Life bubble, but yeah. Oh, you have life bubble. That's even. So yeah, mind fog doesn't affect you then. I think. No, it does. That's right. It's not inhaled. Say, uh, Cetra, do you want to re-roll that since it's your lucky number? Well, that one actually was my lucky number. It's a suppress. <laughs> Unit to harmful gases and vapors. So it is a fog. It's a <laughs> so yeah, life bubble would protect against that.
Yeah, it would protect, so don't worry about it then. Oh, uh, okay. Take back that lucky number. Yay, I'm helping. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what effects you have on you, so they're just trying what they can. So, yeah. etc. And now they know, and knowing is half the battle. Because knowledge is power! Um, I'm going to start shooting at... I guess the big one. Okay. On the plus side, she's definitely a demon. Yeah, she's definitely. Last time I checked. Okay. Uh, let's see. AC is that number. Okay. No. Yes. No. Or no. Wait. No. Yes. Yes. No. No. So it looks like three arrows, Bosco. Uh, who's it attacking? Etc. Odinka. I don't think he's within range in order to actually cast a. Uh, yeah, out of thirty feet. Oh, okay. Never mind. If she was attacking this one, it would. But. And checking with D. Oh yeah, so she's got both. Never mind. Okay, all good. Anything else, Cetra? Um, no, I guess that's it. <laughs> okay. Joran, what you doing? All right. Uh, Joran is going to have his um, weapon cast greater invisibility. Okay. And... Then he is going to, as soon as roll 20 catches up, he's going to step up towards um, the one next to Cetra. Does your weapon have the super invisibility or? Yeah, it has um, hidden where you can't locate him at all. So he's the thing that Reed's got, right? Yeah. Very nice. Uh, and he, he'll just stay there. I'll move him as soon as I can. Hurry for roll 20. All right, let's see. This guy is going to take a five foot step back and then is going to point at Reed and go with... Mm, yeah, he's going to go with uh, Greater Spell Magic. Okay. Just got to find his caster level. Be 20 minus 11. So up to caster level 7, which I don't think is going to affect anything. Nope. Will, um, oh. Hold on. I have to double check one stuff. Uh, that will nuke my mirror images, actually. Okay. All right, and... The downsides of wands, folks. This guy is going to re do the same thing that his previous person did on Yuhia. <laughs> Caster level 8, which is not going to be good. I don't think anything on me is a caster level 8. But a worthy effort. One stuff. There you go, Bosco. Um, actually, that'll get your stone skin. Oh, okay, he got something. Yeah, and that actually... He's just has... trying his best! Hey, 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 he succeeded. He got <laughs> something, so he should feel proud. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so what I forgot to do is swift action, start, inspire courage. It's been two weeks. Yeah. That's fine. 
Oh, good. I only forgot the most important skill on the bard. <laughs> Um, you say that, but I say versatile performance. We're still at uh, plus three on those, right? Yeah. Then. Um. Standard action. Bosco is going to cast Wandering Star Motes on this creature. Odinka? Odinka? Or Tinka. So, will okay. save. Um, gates and concealment. Must make a will save. So, Dinka's will save is. And I need an SR check, which is. 33. Yeah. Well, you already. No, that's your save thing. That. Okay. So. Um, 33 is fine, so you got through that. Needs a will save, which is... Where Probably is gonna it? be way up there. Surprisingly, demons actually generally have a lower will save. I just have to make sure she doesn't have anything really special on her. Yeah, I was about to say something about depraved nature and all that. Hmm. Demons are crazy. <laughs> Two. 36. Okay, so then it moves to the next closest in 30 feet, so this guy. Okay. Um, Alright, so Colossus over here has a will save. Gotta make sure there's nothing special about them. So I think they're three. Okay, plus. Oh, they have that. Okay. All right, so D20 plus 17. 23. So All right, no. so he's dazed. And then Bosco is going to use a point of mythic to throw a shot, starting from this guy, then, uh, yeah, then to this guy, and then go from there. Okay. I have everything here. You know, it honestly makes sense that the Colossus failed against that uh, the Star Motes thing, given all the lights and it being a fly. <laughs> so that's the first. Don't go toward it! I can't help it! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's see. Oh, that's a shame. Um. Wait, is that yeah, I'll just let it be. We're doing fine. All right, so far. Wait, you casted a swift action to start, and then wandering yep. star motes is a standard. Yeah, and then, and then I used a uh, mythic use point for attack? amazing initiative. Right. Yeah. Okay, making sure. Okay, so the first one's a fifty-two. Definitely gonna hit for thirty-five plus three, so uh, th thirty-eight. Yeah, and then the second um, one just misses. What? Oh no, you have a plus five magic on it, so it's still not going to factor. Starting at that plus five stuff, so I don't even have to worry about DR. <laughs> it's amazing. I don't have to do any minuses. <laughs> yeah. Less math when you get higher math. <laughs> then you get into <laughs> Mythic DR. Yeah. Well, Mythic DR, you guys bypass anyways. We be Mythic. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. That's the thing I just don't understand. Like things get like dr10 slash epic, but because you guys are missing, you bypass epic. Well, it's, I think it's meant more to like be really like challenging me, like the super boss for a non-mythic group. Yeah. This whole adventure can technically be run without mythic rules, which is insanity to me. Well, if it was run with non-mythic rules, it would be run base rather than running with all the shit that I've changed. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I can't see the Jorns there, so I'm gonna still five foot step over and try to uh, stab at a fly. Go for the eyes, bro! But which one? If so many! Stab them all! Jesus, I love your crits. 
Okay, so AC for Coloxus is that number. So yes, crit. Yes, crit. Uh, 32 is a no. Uh, yes, yes. So the only one that missed is the third attack. So four bots go. And both runs? Well, just one. I have it. I couldn't figure out how to put it on the weapon without putting it in the weapon notes, which means it appears on both entries. Two hundred forty-four points of damage. What's a number in there, sir? Oh, the two holies. Yeah. Um. What is? Yeah, that's right. Your weapon counts as good and cool on it. So. Yep, uh, both of them do because I'm also a high enough little paladin where anything I wield technically counts as good. Reed, what are you doing? Reed's gonna five foot back. Trying to get a little distance here. Um. Oh, she it takes is following. Need action to move five foot up to you. Oh, you. <laughs> Um. All right, fine. Then I shall attempt to do a thing. Already moved, so I can't do that. So I'm just gonna try to do the the old tried and true. Is of course our our favorite glitter dust. Let's see, we'll save against blindness. What do I got here with Dinka Wingat here? Oh, okay. All right, so that's fine. Um, D20 plus. This is over here, so the uh, little dude. Boxes. Yeah. I don't honestly expect to catch her in this. That's just a fluke if she fails it. She's she can't turn invisible, but she doesn't turn yep. invisible. Um, Galaxus is is blinded. He's dazed and blinded. Yep, he gets to make new saves on the days though. At the end of his round. Oh yeah, he does. All right. I used to live well, by wandering star boats on a different campaign. Well then, we're, we've got a reed within five feet, I'm all within yeah. range of him. So yeah. this is gonna be bad. I, I did not think this through. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and preemptively throw this up. <laughs> it might block one attack, maybe. So the first one is a pure, uh, pure whiff. at the end is not a thing. Yeah, the first pure, one's a whiff. Pure whiff. Uh, stone shield goes down. Miss, miss. Hit, 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 miss, hit. So one, two, three, four hits. So let's see. Yeah, your AC is 38. So it's a miss, miss, miss. Hit, hit, hit. Now your stone shield only applies to like the first stack or what? It, the I the first one that's within four or less, and it just okay. crumbles. I'm assuming her damage is more than uh, twenty and change. Yeah, her damage starts. Well, I was about to say the first one that's actually within four or less of what your AC would be with that is that forty. 
Um, no, her his AC is a thirty. Oh wait. Uh, so my AC is thirty eight normally, plus four from the st from the slab. Okay. So forty two. So forty two. So if it's within thirty eight, yeah. So yeah. There it goes. All right. So let's determine damage. It actually makes only three hits: the forty, the forty six, and the forty six. Yeah, so the 40, 46, the, the 40 and up will hit me, effectively. The the 38 would hit the stone shield instead, and that takes the damage instead of me. Sorry, I confused that. It's okay. Okay, so... Yeah, so the stone shield takes that damage. Um, so 14, 18, and 17 points of damage. Okay. It's not too bad. At least you aren't dead. And oh, far, far mm -hmm. from it. Yeah. He, she missed. She she rolled pretty low on, her, on a few attacks, so that was a problem. I yeah, can't win them all. Yep. That's nothing a false life won't fix. feels like I'm wasting around if I just go pure defensive. It's alright. So full acrobatics that last range. Uh, such a does provoke these days. That's which is why he's acrobatics in the remainder. Cool. What's your uh, CMD over there, etc.? Better than a nat one. Oh, uh, skill check. Forty-one. Yeah. Okay, so etc. Uh, does provoke. So etc. You get one single attack on the Colossus. love the ridiculousness of high level items legendary plus five adaptive holy phase locking composite longbow go <laughs> and he's readying an action um, let's see if did this guy um, he's gonna get right here and he is going to get a single attack Bite attack on Yuhia at plus 41. Jeez. 53. Oh, uh, yeah, that'll hit. Okay, D6 plus 8 plus Siphon. So Siphon is um, Fortitude save. Alrighty. All right, so no charisma damage, but regular damage is fine. 11 regular damage. Alrighty. Cetra, currently a uh, person next to you. I'm going to move five feet. I've got no aim. That's 10 feet, by the way. My mouse is messing up. Hold on. Okay. Whoa. That's 30 feet. <laughs> 57 feet. <laughs> okay, so for some reason it locked on my mouse. I don't know why. And I was like moving my mouse and my icon. It was not letting but, it go. Yeah, but I've, 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 seen it. I've, seen it. I've seen it do that before. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm going to rapid at the bug that provoked me to begin with. Okay. 
Do it. Oh, I forgot about this. Forgot about the sneak attack damage. Okay. What are you talking about? Wait, what? Okay. Uh, I forgot about the sneak attack damage that Colossus do. So. No, Bosco and Reed were saying something about long legs and long striding mythic. We're just joking around. Strider. <laughs> oh, okay, I was like, wait, is this something I missed? Hold on. Okay. So, AC versus this guy is... Where's my... Okay, AC is... Yes, yes, yes. Natural one and a d20 roll and a yes. Who are these against? The Caloxus, which I don't know how close it's. Okay, that'll be within. Yeah. Actually, never mind. You are such as just outside. Okay, so, no additional damage on that one. So, 228 on him. Joran, it's your turn. All right, uh, he's going to try to hit this uh, Colossus that is apparently prone, staggered. He's staggered. staggered. Okay. It's uh, going to swift cast a uh, divine power, put a little oomph into it, and then do a full attack. And then with his uh, extra haste attack. Depending on what they have, he might be going against flat-footed since he's all invisible. Yes. Super invisibility at uh, this level. Oh, nice. Bosco, do you need to see your ally? Ah, uh, no. As long as he can hear it, and he doesn't even have to hear it because I have ghostly performance. <laughs> nice. Alright, so this guy... He's going to move up here, and the ready action the from his wandering, ally. Wandering goes... Star Motes will save. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. What was your DC, uh, Bosco? 28. Plus 13. No, 17. No, 17. What was the DC on those? 28, so he's dazed again. Okay. And he's still blinded. Yep, so he's stuck there. Okay, this guy is no longer in combat. Bosco, your turn. Um, Bosco will just attack. He'll start okay. with this one here. Does that hit? Uh, yes, it does. Okay, so that's the extra, and then... Next will be the guy right beside him. Ooh, nice. There's, there's some damage on it. That'll be the big lady. Oh, you're hitting... Colossus? Oh, she's she's just, the, the third she's, one. She's just yeah, thick. It, she's just thick bone. One, two, three. So 126. Uh, Dinka, yes, that will hit her. Oh, wait. Um, what is your alignment? Kira, good. Okay, that will actually not hit because you are good. Bosco will. Hmm. He is going to pump a Galant Inspiration into that. It's whatever this number is, minus th or three, because they're both competent to this and Inspire. So an extra two. So an extra two, so you had... So it would be a 49? 49. Yeah, that means. Okay, cool. Ah. All right. And then the last attack against the last guy that's dazed. 
Dazed and blinded. Yeah, that definitely hits him. Nice. Okay, that's a standard. Okay, so this this purple, is it a mind fog? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. We're we are ourselves immune to it. Ah, uh, okay. And then mind fog does do block sight. Okay, so he's just gonna move to a better spot to get better bonuses for the team. That's a good it. question, Zach. Is this guy uh in the mind fog? He's currently unaffected by it. Ah. You here. Alright, gonna turn around and go after this one that just attacked me. So... Actually, you know what? Since this is a plus two, I think I... Yep, I do have flanking on here, so... Oh, wait, no. Does Inspire Greatness and Inspire Courage share the same bonus? <clears throat> um, the attack, yes. They're both competence, but um, you get a plus one for it bonus uh, with Inspire okay. Greatness. Okay, so don't have to turn in any bonuses. Excellent. So, yep, just gonna attack him. Do the thing. Um, alright. 41. Let's see. With, with, no wait, no, sorry, looking at the wrong creature. Um, switch to that one, and yes, that's a hit. Hit. With hit hit, so four hits, yay! Mm -hmm. Nice, pretty pretty amazing amount of damage for us uh, important. Heck yeah! Uh, that will be me. Okay. Reed, your turn. Reed vanishes from sight, as per the vanish spell. Because I'd rather not get attacked again. And he just moves uh, back up this way. But now that will be his turn. Okay. Alright. Then it's Odinka. She's going to actually take a five foot step over here instead and is going to unload on Setra. Which I need to make sure I place this effectively. Okay. Sorcerer's remorse when you realize that there was something better you could have done after the fact. Ooh. Oh, uh, that's a problem. Uh, there's a few possible crits in here, actually. Uh, first three are possible crits. First one. Wait, why are there six? Oh, okay. Okay, so we'll start with the first confirm. Second one. If this is against me, I see my AC is 30. Oh. So, Setra, have you earned the Righteous Medal of Vigor yet? No idea, but I think all of those hit. Except for one. Well, let's see how much of a hit point sponge you are. It does still have. Did you say your AC was? 30. I also have stone skin on, and I have the life bubble thing, so. Stone skin will take 10 away from the first 7 attacks. 
So, okay, so crits on the first, second, and third. And you said your thing was a 30, so I have three crits, one hit on the primary. Got those out of the way, and then it's... Oh boy. And then those were all not crits, but you said your AC was a 30, which means that all five of those are just at this number. So it's going to take 10 away from, you said, the first five attacks? Seven. First seven attacks? Is this her... girl attacked like 10 times? If her weapons are plus four or um, better, they'll ignore that. No, they're not. They're just freaking plus one long swords. Okay. So 163 points of damage to Cetra. Including the minus the stone skin? Yeah, I removed 10 from the first seven attacks. Yep. And I think that was all she could do that round, because I don't think she had any swift actions. Nope, she does not. Okay. At least not this round. Um, so this guy here... Um, He's Bosco with a melee weapon, see Cetra up there. Um, he's got enough speed, he can go ahead and do this. So what he's... We're going to have to think in 3D, because this, this place is a little weird. So basically what he's doing is he's going to jump up about 15 feet to get away from her radius, and then jump over so when it's a 5 foot... To get into Cetra's range, it's going to be right there. Does that do anything with the weird aspects of the maze and flying over the walls? No, he's not flying over the walls. He's just flying up enough to gotcha. to uh, to do any of that stuff. So, I'm kind of curious to find out what happens. <laughs> I, was say, I, I see what she's doing. Or yeah. he's doing. Yeah, he's trying to get flank. And that's all it, he's trying to do. It's a four sleep. So D20 plus 41. Plus 41, Jesus. <laughs> um. Uh, that's plus <laughs> Chris. Can I just count myself as knocked out? Like, Jesus. Okay, so he's only gonna do 2D6 plus 16. So 23 points of damage and a fortitude save, I think. Uh, yes, fortitude save. Gotta get you some AC. Fortitude save is fine, so you're not losing any charisma. I never use charisma anyway. <laughs> yeah, but you never wanted to drop too low, because then you go comatose. Yep. Sure. Uh, and this guy is going to acrobatics away from uh, Yukia. What's your CMD over there? 42. And is going to try to do the same thing. They're all over Satra like flies on a piece of... Oh, wait, they are flies. Okay, so that's going to hit. And I need another fortitude save. Oh, and I forgot the... I'm such an idiot. <laughs>
This is why rangers don't get into close combat. <laughs> okay, so it's 14 damage plus 14 sneak, and then I forgot the 12 sneak that was on the Galoxus that was trying to jump around you. Is that a total of 66 damage? Because if so, I am unconscious. It's 40 damage. Cetra, it's your turn. At three health, I'm going to retreat. <laughs> We will make AOs. Um, this guy will be able to make an AO, depending, uh, regardless of what you do. Because retreat only applies to the first, um, the first square. Uh, square. And I don't know what to do in this situation because I'm at three health. You can acrobatics to try to get out without getting any AOs. Or but Joran says, "Stay there a moment." I agree, stay there. Stay there and be hit by two of them. Just hold. <laughs> Trust. Have faith, says the cleric. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He wants you to delay, so I'm going to put you in delay for Joran. Swift cast. And we're going to uh, give Setra 150 points. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. And then he's going to uh, step up to him and hit. Okay. Oh, cool. Nice. He's also going to use uh, Faux Bite, which will double uh, one of these damages. So he's going to actually, since it's a crit, he can triple that. That's a legendary foe bite. Okay. I'll do it this time, but if you're going to use bow, uh, foe biting, you're going to need to proclaim it before you use it. Oh, I thought it just said, if you cause damage. Actually, I, I just found it. It says, when this item deals damage. Uh, it's normal attack. Use double... Okay. Okay, actually, when it's a crit, it's not triple damage. You double the total damage. So, it's you take that crit... It's a legendary power to double the total damage. So, it would be... 52 plus 52 plus 9 times 2. Which means it'd be 226. Yes. Sweet. Okay, so that's plus a <laughs> plus six. Plus six, right. I was about to say, yeah, there was a reason you he had never took that ability because I thought it would be cruel. Etc. Um, I'm still gonna have to move back a little bit, but it's uh, acrobatics to get away from that one. Well, in this case, there's uh, you can either take like a five foot step back onto a corpse, or uh, if you really want to get out, withdraw, and then you get out without. Uh... Oh wait, no, she's moving. I forgot that. Got step up. <laughs> yeah, you you might get s smacked once. But if you were to disengage, you would get clearly out of there. Yeah, disengaging seems a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, you might still want to acrobatics just in case. If you're withdrawing, that that she doesn't move because she does, that doesn't activate step up. Oh. It requires a five foot step for step up to actually function properly. Oh, nice. But that means I also can't attack this turn, correct? Since I'm moving back. You could yeah, technically you use, use a mythic point for an extra standard action for a single shot. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I guess I'll do that. Okay. It'll be at the girl. Okay. Okay, so let's see. 
59 is a hit, so 38 points damage. Plus two important. Ah. Oh, uh. There we go. 40 points of damage. Nice. That hurts. Okay, this guy's just gonna make we'll saves. Save. Nope, I don't think I still either. dazed. I think that gets out of the glitter dust, though. I thought it was twenty-nine. Double checking. Yeah, just why not. Still stuck, but Bosco, your turn. Doesn't All matter. Right. Still Bosco will five foot step and he will attack, starting with the guy in the front. Okay. I'm trying so hard to navigate this, these tabs. Okay, so I rolled two, so it'll be. One, two, and then three. Hit, hit, and I need one more. Um, just throw these up real quick, and then the last guy. That's all good hits. Okay, that's a standard. Then as a swift action, he's going to spend another point of mythic to just throw a deadly throw at the main one. Uh, yeah, that's gonna hit for 51 points of damage. And that is all. You here. Alrighty. I'm gonna mark the big lady for a, a smite. Okay. Proceeding up into the melee. Any attacks incoming from her? Uh, yeah, she's definitely going to get you an attack. One second. Just have to get that. That will not beat my CMD with my smite up. Okay, so you successfully move up. I will get a single hit in. Oh, I got a chance that effect as well. So, yeah, okay, so that's gonna hit. Uh, let's see. And since she's a demon, it's double damage, and then she owes me a fortitude save versus the stagger. Fortitude save, which thirty-four. It's gonna be a nice thing for if they ever roll a one. But she's at least still staggered for one turn. Two hundred seventy-four points of damage. Nice. Ouch. Yeah, that right there was the reason I never took foe biting. <laughs> Reed. <laughs> Alright, Reed will come in, seeing that they're in a, a, a good alignment. And he'll uh, throw some energy around. Okay. Alright, we're going to empower this. Level 5 spell. Empowered Acid Spray. 
followed by a cold ice strike. Acidic spray affects no one. Cold ice strike affects no one. Uh, they're immune to both. A spell, uh, spell resistance. You failed it. Oh, can I surge that? You could. One of them. All right, we'll do the acid spray. Although the cold ice strike does affect your swift action. Is the surge on an item a swift? Counts as an immediate action. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna take away a swift next round. God damn it. So nothing happens. Good try, though. The, the curse of the caster. Yeah, it's a spell resistance problem. It makes me wonder how Abasco got his so high. Okay, he is, she is going to use her once a day to ignore an effect that would lower her... Bas Bosco is very special. And? I, I have tools to get oh, okay. past spell resistance, but I have to think about it beforehand. Okay. She's ignoring Staggered this round. Okay. Okay, so she is going to go and then go with... Um, she's actually going to start with a Tail Slap instead. Fifty-four versus AC. Oh, that will actually hit me. Okay, so two D six plus. So fifteen points of damage and a fifty versus CMD for grappling. Uh, that will grapple me. Okay, and then she's going to stab you with all of her swords. Can I immediate action a liberating command to get out of that grapple? Not when you your swift action has been used this round. Yeah, because it's you're an immediate. Tactical. Well, yep. we already used it. Oh, wait, no. The no, we cold didn't. ice strike utilizes the swift and... Well, not immediate. Use yeah, no, it, the issue is the other way around. If you use your immediate, you lose your swift. Not if you use your swift, you lose your immediate. No, they're on the same exact track. So I've never used a swift in the same round. I used an immediate, which is why uh, when you guys said you use a swift, oh, okay, don't have an immediate. That was all the way back in book three, remember? Okay. Probably should put the freaking check on the, the roll so I don't have to like scroll through these and find out if they're possible crits. All right, so does 53 hit you? Yep, that'll oh, hit. So do 20, yeah, it's a natural 20. Um, so what about a 52? That will confirm. No, 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 that's not a confirm. Um, oh, so that will hit. these are all these are all single strikes. Um, so what's your AC actually against her? So that way I can just kind of use it backwards. 52. Okay. So she got two shit, two hits. That's including the grapple uh, minus, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Sweet. So that is 53, 52 is the only ones that actually hit you, which means she gets a crit confirm for these two strikes, making it... element so we can get rid of it. Great. Okay. All right. So you said, yeah, so both of these are definitely crits. Um, so one's just a 46 plus 44. And the other one is 46 plus 22. 
54 and 33 points of damage. I'll use Absorb the Blow on the first one to take off. Let's see, my level. Oh, tier, I should say. So 9 times 5, 45. So 37 total. Okay. Uh, this guy's actually going to take a 5 foot step back and is gonna pop a glitter dust right here. So I need a will save for Joran, Reed, and Bosco. Reed's fine. And Joran is now visible. He'll pay for that. It's going to uh, stay put and lunge. Sounds good. Who are you hitting? Oh, that's uh, right. It's going to be this guy. Yeah. Go full attack on that guy. Forty-two, forty-eight, forty-eleven, forty-nine. It's gonna. Let's see. Let's see. Thirty-nine. Yes. So yes. Yes. And yes. Is he still up? Let me check. One hundred seventy-two. He's still alive. Surprisingly. All right. Uh, he will hit again, or try to hit again. Uh, yeah, you took him out. Okay. Anything else? Uh, let's see. How's everybody looking? Everybody's okay? Eh, not a bit. is still looking a little bit rough, so... We'll send a cure... Serious wounds. Swift cast cure, nice. It's super ethereal. Oh, uh, I forgot. To... How many of those were hits? Oh, oh the thing was dead. Out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Actually, never mind about that. Swift cast. You do it. Conserve. Etc. What you doing? Um, I'm gonna attack at the girl again. Sounds good to me. Do the full attack. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. No, wait. Oh. oh, that's right. Her AC is that high. What is your um, alignment, by the way? Neutral. Chaotic okay. neutral. So, 41's a whiff. 57 is a hit. 44 is a whiff. 46 is a hit. 40 is a whiff. Let's see what we got. One hundred and twenty-five. So as she falls, she says, May your bones join those of a million others. This guy, he's gonna try to make all the saves that he's been trying to. She actually died? Ooh. <laughs> he comes back too and everybody's dead. So, yep, at the end of his turn, he is back to normal. Yep. Bosco. Bosco is going to use that ability I forgot the name of. 
Oh no, there's no shooting star. Two attacks. Um, this isn't into melee. Okay, and that is going to hit him both times. And throw two of those out there. Okay. That's all. Else? You hear what you're doing. Alright, now that I'm no longer grappled, I'm gonna crawl over the body of a dead snake lady to stab it a fly. Okay. Do the stabbing. Once my sheet stops freaking out for me turning off the grappled condition. Alright, I think it's calmed down. Fifty-four, fifty-three, definitely going to hit. Uh and he gets a fortitude save. <laughs> Whoops, wrong button. Well, he's still staggered for a round. Staggered for a single round. 73 points down. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah, well, I guess I'll give myself a good touch. Okay. Reed, what are you doing? Uh, how bad is he looking? He's looking like he's getting hurt. He's got some damage on him, finally. We'll, we'll keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it safe. SR is a check. Uh, let's see. 27 versus touch. Yeah, his touch is pretty low. Um, 20 points of damage. Huh. That entire last dungeon, I was using the wrong number for my uh, lay on hands. I was down at E6. Oh, well. Yep. All right. Anything else, Reed? No, that's all. She's out of combat. He's out of combat. Joran, your turn. Uh, let's uh, move up. And attack. Do the attacking thing. It's a good attacking thing. It's a pretty good attacking thing indeed. Uh, 64 points of damage. Okay. Stay put. Setra, what you doing? Is the other one within range, or is that a wall? No, it's you could see him. Okay. That'll do it. That'll do a significant amount of damage. Um, yes, because his AC is that, so the old third attack missed, but everything else hit. Two hundred forty-three points of damage takes this guy out. Good job. It was quite the welcoming party. They earned bones. Join those of a million others. It says as it falls down. <laughs> yours yeah, yeah, first. we heard that one before. Yours will go first. Now for the tried and true method of taking all their stuff. Basically, he's got lots of armaments, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she had on her, let's see, it is Oh wow, I'm a I'm a real genius here. I forgot the uh for, forgot the damage reduction from the stole. Uh, 
hey, that's still like that's still at least you know twelve thousand gold just from the enchantments. Yeah, it's closer to fourteen, but yeah. Yeah, with the mass work and everything, you are correct. I'll use up one more use of the good touch. Need much, Mike, but uh, I could use a little bit of that loving too. Alright. Let's say go through the cure lights before we burn through the cure mods, though. Sure. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm good. Where to? Looks like there is a door to the south. Uh, well, after this uh, welcoming committee, uh, this is supposedly the capital. Uh, place to find information. Wonder if. Uh, do demons eat? I don't believe they do. Would they even have a pub or anything along those lines? Well, they don't need to eat. They more eat because they want to. Oh. Uh, I don't know where we'll find information about the the current state of things in this realm, other than just to look around for creatures to ask or to uh, demand the information from. I'm not sure what, how to approach this. I'm not sure either. I mean, I could do as a survival role. Since I know the plane, since I retrained on it. It's, uh, you, I mean, what are you looking to do? To figure out if there is a place to eat here. Well, uh, right now you're standing in the entrance to the maze, but well, one of the entrances to the maze. But you are not in any city whatsoever. Oh. Oh, yes, of course. That makes sense. Uh, gather together. We'll transport us to uh, uh, the capital. And then you realize you have no idea where that is. If, um, does the crying orb gizmo help with that? Nope. Not on this realm. Gotcha. Oh, it seems that uh, I'm a bit at a loss. Is there any divinations that anyone has available that might at least point us in the direction? What kind of direction are we looking for? Uh, the path to the capital. I mean, I can try, but nothing is for sure. Um, can Bosco tell how many different ways there are to go from here? Like, out of this room? I think I'm confused. We're in a maze, right? Yes, and the maze has many directions you can go. Uh, 
Um, Bosco will walk around, just get an idea of where we are. So I assume there, there's, they're just all doors. Doors. Yep. You see doors, okay. doors, One, two, three, doors, more doors, and more doors. Five, six. All right. He sees six doors. He will sit down and draw three cards. Okay. So we've got the trumpet. The uprising. And the rabbit. He thinks on this for a moment. Bosco is going to point to this door up here. Okay. Excellent. It's good to have some kind of direction here. Gotta be this way. There's no way Desna would steer me wrong. Okay. So, um, you guys proceed through the door, um, which leads to another corridor, which leads to another turn, another corridor. Um, and um, I need someone to make a survival check. And here's where rangers shine out of combat. Mm -hmm. For a survival roll? Yep. Cracking and not getting lost. So, you guys are going to spend the next... Um, the next day getting out of the ivory maze. Um, so after an hour, uh, you, after an hour into your navigation, um, you receive a message from Irabeth. This is, where are you located? Uh, we will inform her of the door we went through. And the uh, the path we took in general over the course of an hour. Okay. Um, she says there's no door to the north. Seems that this place changes. Hmm. I wonder if it changes, or maybe whatever door you choose to go through disappears. We should test this out. Uh, we should be very careful to stick close together, then. We can't afford to get separated here. Only uh, Joran is able to return us back to our own plane. You receive another message from, uh, from her. 
This is going to cast Scry. I guess Reed will keep an eye out for the scrying sensor. He's always got to scrying up. Back to scrying up, rather. Okay, so um, after an hour, um, let's see, it's going to be cast on um, Cetra. You have a will save, but you can choose to not take the will save. And this is for her scrying? You're getting a will save, but... Well, that's what I'm asking. Is this like because she said she's scrying? After an hour, you feel this this will save going on, but I'm, you're not going to know of it until it happens. Yep, so it's up to you. You can choose to let it happen, or you can choose to resist it. Bosco puts one um... hand on Cetra's shoulder and says, "Don't worry. If something goes wrong, I can stop it." Okay, I'll let it go then. Okay, so a scrying sensor appears above Cetra's head. Um, it looks around, and then a few seconds later, there is a company of um, six um, six clerics and six um, wizards and your two friends that you've decided to bring along with. And some uh, some warriors, uh, a group of fourteen warriors, and some supplies they brought with them. Nice. Says, Glad you could make it. She says, "Well, where? Like, did you find a way to go? Did you find a place we could go in and set up?" Well, we wanted to remain in place for your scrying. Uh, firstly, but as for setting up, uh, we have yet to find a, a suitable spot yet, though we fear that the maze may change. So it would be wise if we were to travel together for the moment. All right. Well, lead the way. And we will let Cetra lead the way. So you spend the next day navigating through the maze um the ivory maze is a dungeon-like tangle of rooms with tunnels with walls floor and ceiling paved in countless bones tunnels range between uh 10 and 25 feet wide with numerous rooms and junctions and other chambers often set up by doors some secret some obvious the ivory maze is lit by a soft unsettling sightly light that has no obvious so a source um, there is some denizens, but, um, every time I roll, you guys just seem to, are able to steamroll them, especially with everybody around. Um, and, uh, you successfully make it to the edge of the ivory maze, or one of the edges of the ivory maze, after an entire day. Um, and you see before you, uh, what this realm actually is when, when you see the edge, you see so many different types of, uh, of settings between mountains sitting next to plains that glow purple and twisted forests and, uh, that make up like its own maze itself and then you see um, glowing crystal uh, formations down in the distance that don't seem to have any kind of distance like you don't really understand how close or how far they are to you rivers that run through deserts and uh, different little uh, buildings that are standing next to ruins seems this place has a very odd structure to it that doesn't seem to have any kind of meaning to where you go. This place is truly maddening. It's fascinating in a way. 
Every terrain imaginable, every maze imaginable. It's like they took a, a piece from every maze ever created and found a home for it here. Uh, they may be demonic and uh, abyssal fiends, but that is uh, an accomplishment just the same. So, um, you do find a, a, a somewhat of a clearing in between the mazes entrance that you have to do to navigate where you need to go for towns. Um, and it's, um, so you're able to kind of find a place where you can kind of set up camp for everybody. Alrighty. This place is very desolate. Um, they there's no um, real like edible foliage. There's no edible animals or anything like that. It's all just most of the stuff is either made of bones or um, tr inedible tree bark or anything like that. It's a good thing we brought our own, then. Agreed. Uh, once we establish a, a campsite, so to speak, uh, Reed will provide a casting of... Uh, what that spell called? Mage's Sanctum. So 24-hour prevents scrying. Um... 16 30 foot squares wide. Okay. At least while we're here, it can protect us from spying. Unless we return every every day, it, it will expire, so be wary. I'm sorry, what would expire? Uh, I cast a very large area anti-scrying spell. It lasts 24 hours, um, but if we don't come back here every day, I'm not here to recast it. Okay. Um, and we do have a, a, a endless decanter of water. It's just a matter of providing food. Well, we can uh, we can drink the water from the spell, and we can use the uh, the decanter for cleanup. It's got like a fire hose uh, feature, right? Correct. It, it does. We had to be a preciously specific situation for that to actually find use, though. Someone hold the plate. Someone aim the geyser. Hmm? Somebody holds the plate and the other person aims the geyser. <laughs> <laughs> we need to give Baphomet a bidet. There we go. gonna do now all right for camping for the night we're gonna read of course will always double up his uh, adventuring protection by creating a portable sleeping hole because he's freaking paranoid when it comes to adventuring okay get a little crafting done do a little dance make a little love get down tonight oh All right. Uh, as far as uh, 
Anivia, is it? Anivia and Erebeth are here. Yeah, sorry, it's it's been a while since we dealt with these two particular NPCs. Um, we would like to open discussion with Anivia about um, what potential scouting she and her scouts might be able to provide to help find our way here. Says, well, well, I'm going to be scouting out to see if we can locate a direction that we can go. But seeing as this place is completely different than, than the material plane, I'm not too sure how much assistance we can provide, but we can provide as much as we can. Yes. I, I would like to uh, stress the importance of uh, to you and your scouts to not try to scale the walls. There's something about this realm that... Uh, if you don't take the mazes seriously, if you try to cheat... It will react in a poor way, and I know, know the extent of what that will be. I'd rather not find out. Hmm. Seems like a decent idea. Let's keep that in mind. Thankfully, being at least teleport, it's just trying to float above it is apparently against the rules. Yes, uh, once we find a destination, uh, we can transport quite easily to it, but I'm afraid we have to find it rather manually first. Which way do we go next? We have our nice little base camp. Oh, how does it defer to our trackers for that? Unless there's uh, some magical means. I've been racking my brains. I can't think of anything if I don't know what we're looking for. Well, uh, I think. Didn't you learn something about the capital of this place? Out of game, I, I think you rolled high enough to learn like that this place does have a capital or something. Yes. Oh, yes, uh, indeed. It starts with like a B or something. Um, you were looking for Blackburg and Echo Stall. That's right. Blackburg it. is the realm's capital and the city's heart for Batman. Blackburg can be thought as the center of the Ivory Labyrinth. So if you if you tell Jorn about that, uh, perhaps he can cast a spell that may help. It's worth a try. Yeah, I mean Reed is exhaustive in the knowledge that he shares to the point where you're more likely or not to try to shut him up less than get him to tell you something. So he will attempt to cast Find the Path. It's found a path. Would anyone like to follow the path that is set before us? It seems we have little choice, to be honest. Okay. Uh... I need someone to roll two, two separate D100 rolls. And which one would you like to keep? What do you guys think? The low? Um, yeah, I guess we can keep the low. All right, we'll go for the low. And you successfully rolled the number that leads to Blackburg. 
a tangled, densely packed city of wooded and stone buildings, their faca facades drooping and cake with soot and grime. The buildings themselves make up a 20-foot-high walls of the maze, leaving alleys that are generally 5 to 10, 10 feet wide, and a sky above thick and above thick with smoke and fog. Primarily a town for demonic ritual and veneration of Baphomet. It contains many demonic hatcheries, breeding grounds for beasts and monsters, and warehouses for various materials coveted by demons. The ground here is somewhat damp with blood and ichor and reeks of smoke and decay. Is this what we were looking for? You, you seem to have stumbled through the labyrinth into Blackbird initially. What do the, uh, what, what's the hustle and bustle of the denizens look like? Is it a place of commerce and regular business, or is it like guards everywhere, or, or what? This place does not look like it's any town that you would be familiar of. It looks like this is more of a, a continuous barracks of that just every single building looks like it's just a place for demons to be housed um, between cages and and uh, different like places of, of uh, worship of Baphomet, places of, of just sitting there. Um, there's no real commerce here that's going on here. Does anyone have any, uh, suggestions on how we approach this? Uh, we need to do some fact-finding and, uh, find out where this prison is. Could start uh, asking around, see who uh, might be the important players here to uh, ask questions of. Okay, uh, I need a survival check for navigation. Oh, that's right. I have it under senses. But I'm sure uh, Cetra is going to blow that out of the water, of course. Can you get a survival check, please, Cetra? I'm ready. Okay. So, you're able to kind of find a path that leads to um, that leads to the location you're looking for. Um, but uh, let me go ahead, do this. All right, let's take a 10 minute break and then when we come back, I'll have everything set up. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. Mm -hmm. So uh, about eight o'clock. Yep. Sounds good. Um, let's see, Vroon, you know, seeing him try looking around, you know, with an empty gaze, Vroon is going to to sidestep him here, flying off the ground so he's not leaving any sounds or anything, and just kind of get out of the way, and uh, yell at Nirgrim. His flank is open! Finish him. Darren. You see his flank open. Look what you do. They're gonna go five foot. <laughs> grab that club and throw it again. <laughs> as, as, it flies, as the club flies through the air and strikes him in his open flank. Does a 23 confirm? Yes. Yes! <laughs> oh my fucking god! I don't think there are hill giant proctologists yet. <laughs> Which 
just you? Probably. Oh, hey, guys. We have uh, official Paizo in chat right now. Oh. What? It's lying to me. That it's sounds hard. really fake. I don't know if I'd believe it, man. They better prove it by giving us something that's official Paizo. I can say the archives. <laughs> Seriously, I don't have that book yet, and I feel like I would like to spice up these encounters by throwing more things at them. Maybe like six CRs higher than what they are. I know some of them want to re-roll with the new PC races. Come on, official Paizo, you know you got us. Alright, I think I'm gonna grab Um, one actually, here. no, this that's actually the name, guys. <laughs> I mean, yes, but let's be real, if official Paizo is actually watching us, and let's say they are, sure, they would want to see all of our actual bullshittery when they're watching us, and so that seems very us. Fair you know, enough. begging for shit from I... official Paizo. Fair enough, I fair enough. I think that they just wanted to hear us talk about the balloon condoms. That's all. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm sure they really enjoyed that part. <laughs> I like the fact that you're still streaming. Man. God, it's agonizing to resist. <laughs> <laughs> Seems Seems having to have some kind of protective barrier. I'm just saying, Reed's having uh, performance issues with his rock. Let's say, hit it again. And needless to say, I'm going to keep doing this until we get it through and it works, so... Alright, so give me another melee attack. Another uh, touch attack. And it, it resists it once more. Okay, the five. <laughs> the four is a miss. The th th he, he touches the pedestal uh, instead of it. Okay, all right. Um, back, backing up a little bit. So clearly this cage is some kind of protective barrier, right? No, you don't think the cage... Well, like, the cage seems to be to prevent it from moving. Okay. Um, But... You think that the wardstone itself is resisting the rod of cancellation. For, I mean, this thing is an artifact versus basically something that's trying to cancel out an artifact. Sure, I understand that with the DC. I'm referring to the attack roll. Uh, so the thing is, is that the actual artifact is pushing it back. Okay. And so it basically gets a little bit of armor versus the attack because it's like you're trying to put the rod... And the rod is, and, and the wordstone is like pulsing out this energy. So as you get close, it go, as the rod gets close, it like pulses with this energy. So you want to try another one? I am literally going to keep trying to do this until it works. We're not leaving until this works. Okay. <laughs> Take it out to dinner. <laughs> Let's keep going. Like, do you really need me to roll for this? <laughs> yes. We're gonna make you suffer, boy. <laughs> yep, the more you have to pay for it, the more oh, you God. have to yeah, this take her out on a lovely date. <laughs> okay, stop. stop! Oh, there he goes! There, 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 we got it, we got it! Okay, now we can go through <laughs> the entire oh, thing that is goes on. Holy... <laughs> oh, that's like, I, I have, like, a lot of, like, great green text to go through. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> This is awesome. Just could you imagine Reed's face as he's just like jamming it in there? <laughs> it's kind of like it's that. Like, oh. It's like the first big time we've heard the old man curse. He's like, work, you blasted damn thing, work. Yeah. Karen. Taryn leans over the, the lich, grabs its bony wrists and places them over its head and then unclips a feather from his cloak. And standing up, he invokes the power of a feather token anchor on the lich's head. <laughs> That's terrible. A anchor large enough to hold is still a very large ship appears in midair and just buries the lich's head, arms, and shoulders. I don't think he's casting after that. 
Okay. And this pace starts getting faster and faster. Crazy car alarms. And click, everything. clack, click, clack, click, clack. And you can see that uh, there's many different gears that you didn't recognize immediately. And uh, it's like a clockwork. Just an amazing um, display of moving parts in various places. Either the wretched thing is having a fit or it's trying to communicate. So all that noise is coming from this creature? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> As Jamie Lore says that, it says, click, clack, click. Oh, we, we know your language. Click the zing. We were part of the Great March. Clack, clack. We were separated. Cling, cling, zing. We were lost. Zing. You're way too much fun with that, Mike. <laughs> Very carefully. Uh, methodically, precisely stack some bits of cheeses on an, a napkin and wraps the napkin and just shoves the whole thing into his tunic side pocket and like you could almost hear the squish <laughs> <laughs> cheese oh no well, then, and then looks to you Vistra and says good luck I could cast Stinking Cloud to make his last moments, uh, unpleasant. Is that how much damage it takes? That is how much damage it takes. How much does Scruffy have? Not that much. Oh, and Rashawn can't lay on hands. Not only that, but, uh, it's, it's a terrible scene that happens. Scruffy just gets swept away as it's oh. being pushed and wading into this it its ankles and its feet just melt as it's oh. going in as it falls in it just reaches out and calls out for uh, Rashan as it's being swept away down into the crevice in the uh, flood of lava I am so sorry. spider Wraith Bob Attack. Oh, no. <laughs> oh dear god. So technically that would be a charge when you're falling from above. Yeah, I'll allow it. It's oh fine. Oh god. Oh god. Bob in a fit of suicidal rage just dives into the pit head first. That should be a plus two. So for I don't the know what the charge in that. So that's plus two yeah, on the charge. Just... Yeah, it's just charge plus two. Uh, it hits. <laughs> now there's the Wait, question, hold on. Now there's the the question take... of falling damage. Yeah, doesn't the thing take falling damage equal to an object of its of the rhinoceros' size? Uh, it's the difference between like an object versus a character. The rules, as written, are assigned to like normal, medium-sized characters falling, and it technically is a charge attack. Hmm. There isn't anything about falling damage for characters like that, so we can play it out however you want. How much does a rhino weigh? I just I, in my uh... I I'm just I'm just going to say this before the ship might turn. Rule it how you want it to be ruled. Do you want it to be falling damage? Do you want it to be damage per weight? <laughs> um, I feel like the damage per weight. Uh, let me ask you this though. Are you going to call this a bludgeoning attack if it's damage by weight, or is this environmental He's damage? going in face first. This is piercing. True. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm giving it piercing. Okay, I would, I would think... say go by a white rhino's weight. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Well, I don't know if that's the wisest idea, because if this ship mine decides to crawl out of here and throw the rhino back at us, we might be <laughs> running into issues, my friend. I don't think your rhino is going to so one-shot this I, thing and make I, it so we're unable. I also don't think the rhino is going to survive this, because it takes just right. as much damage as it deals. Oh yeah, okay, that's yeah, true. This is a one-way trip. Fair enough. So the rhino tanks and up. deals 75 damage. <laughs> nice. Awesome. <laughs> oh, Bob, you're a fucking legend. So, uh, did you keep your souls, or, or what? No, we kept our No one goes in the vacuum. No one. Well, duh. 
No one, and I'll look right at Mousetail. Give him the finger. No! Sini looks over to I Mouse. I just want to know if she could make a magic rapier, but you know, it's okay. It's okay. Sini looks over to Mousetail and it's like, blah, 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 blah. His, his, his ears kind of droop. His ears droop and he drops his club and just kind of drags it into the sand. It is spread. And, and then Vicini just points down to the sleeping pirate to the south. We really need a translator in here. He said, uh, let's kill those guys. <clears throat> yep, that's totally what he said. So he draws, he draws his little short sword. Ah, uh, that's fine. That's fine. We can always order more. Uh, uh, and of sure. course, it's, it's at this moment that um, kind of with a plop right in front of Bumble is this platter with, you know, like a little um, lettuce bed underneath this... Uh, this rather dismal looking fish. Oh, you have it, you have it, you have it. You have it. What oh, happy is baby! That? Oh, this here is the best delicacy in Westgate. It's a. Uh, it's our blobfish special. Not many <coughs> order it. But uh, uh, we, we had one on reserve, fortunately enough. As even the cooked version of it has this pungent aroma. You can basically see the scent vapors kind of coming off of it, and some of you kind of have to, you know, catch yourselves. <laughs> yeah, uh, Arux is, is leaning way back away from that thing. Yeah, it's a deep sea fish. It probably does not smell the best. And, and Bumble's just sitting there with his hands flat on the table, a little, small little line of drool coming down his chin as he's just looking at this thing with bright, wide eyes. But, and do you mean <laughs> to tell me that you're going to eat that? Oh, yeah. I've been waiting for this. My goodness, you are much braver than I thought. Have you ever eaten it before? Oh yeah, a few years ago when I was a little when I was a little chillin', I, I came through town. Well, not intentionally came through town, mind you. It's kind of dropped me off and left me here. But I, I was through town, and, and I have one of them, someone kind enough to provide provide me about to eat. And oh my goodness, it was so good. Oh. Uh, I will take your word for that, because that smells really, really bad and works looks even worse. And as he uh, as it's set down in front of him, grabs the uh, a small uh, cooking knife from his belt. Uh, yeah, everyone carries a cooking kit, and he looks around. And he's like, uh, "You might want to sit back now. It tends to to, to squirt a little." At that, I will stand up from my chair and take two steps from the table. Kind of like a cacophony of chairs scooching over arise as the words leave his mouth. Some like individuals like visibly kind of like hunching away. <laughs> like I'm sure there's definitely some people who are just sitting there in like morbid fascination, like someone's actually going to eat this thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Rx is one of them. Yeah, Lud, Lud is over by the counter. He's just kind of got like one hand on his face. He's slowly shaking his head. <laughs> uh, he, he cuts into it and like one of the eyes just kind of goes squirting off and bounces <laughs> off the table. You, and, you and... hear this like, ah! It's the person just kind of flips out. I'm out! I'm out! <laughs> ah, GG, I guess that one's yours! As the fairy goes chasing after it. And, and you he, just hear Lud just call out, Oi! Could you please keep it a bit cleaner? <laughs> I thought I was! And as he, he mentions it, you know, puts this with it a little bit, and he comes back up with a, a, a piece that has a, like a, like a, an almost slimy gray 
skin on it, like it's exuding its own kind of coating. And just a still slightly twitching gray flesh interior with just the slightest bit of green ooze coming from some identified portion of this fish. <laughs> And he just takes it like a, almost like a raw, raw oyster and just tips his head back and just lets it <laughs> slide off the fork slowly, viscously, down into his mouth and you can just see it bulge in his throat as he swallows it in one <laughs> big piece. Lovely. And he just sits there with this biggest grin on his face. Oh, yeah. Um, about three individuals who have just quieted their conversations to just watch this obscene spectacle all just make these sudden lurches, one having to kind of get up and immediately rush out towards the outhouses. <laughs> um, oh, that's good stuff. Uh, Y'all want some? I don't mind sharing. No, I'm good. Thank you. As I'm just sitting there, trying to even... <laughs> he cuts another piece off and, and holds it up on the end of the fork as a small little green dribble drops onto the table. You know, as tempting as that proposition is, I believe I've just finished that whole platter by myself, so I can't as, um, imagine polishing off a single other bite. As that, um, as that disclob just kind of hits the table with a... Uh, Munin hops off um, the L'Oreal's shoulder and just immediately snatches it up comes back up to her shoulder where the smell again is still quite as pungent just scarfs it down oh look 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 Muren's a fan oh here you go little birdie yes it's he enjoys unique cuisine <laughs> and between the, the ferret the carrion eater and the gnome they finish it off in a, a few more minutes like scarfing this thing well yeah, engulfing it, I should say, is probably more appropriate. At this point, a large, and you can tell, a large portion of the people here have just tuned this out. It's probably <laughs> some changing of hands of gold coins as bets are made. People He's not really giving it away. away. <laughs> you, yeah, you just kind of come upon the scene where everyone's backs are just facing away from you all. <laughs> and we're back all right so um let me go ahead and shift over to here And so you guys are traveling along one of the many alley alleys of the uh, the town. It's between distraught and other things. This doesn't exist. I don't know why that's in there. Um, okay. And um, so I need you all to make a perception check. Still waiting for Cetra to make a perception check. I'm trying to find it. Hold on. Okay, so Cetra and Joran are not going to get a plus four bonus. So now I need... Let's see. We're going to go ahead and roll... 
for skills. Can I just roll all skills next time? Because it's hard to find some of these sometimes. Well, on the sheet, that all skills button will bring like a kind of like a menu thing up and you can like click on it from there. It wouldn't be difficult to send to uh, set up the all skills macro that I use. Oh, just, not in the. That just breaks things down into categories. And the entirety of World 20 just reset on me. numbers for trouble those. Well those suck. So what's your guys touch ACs over there? Oh mirror image doesn't work against this. It has true seeing. Depends what it's from. Is this incorporeal? No, it's not incorporeal. Right, 26. So, um, yeah, you guys. So certain people get plus bonuses to. Uh, so their their uh, the touch roll is a little lower because they've noticed it before it actually went off, but. And let's see. So Reed got hit. Uh, what's so Reed get hit? Cetra, what's your touch? Got what was your touch, Cetra? Nineteen. Okay, so Cetra got touched. Bosco, what's your touch over there? Uh, Twenty-six. Okay, so Bosco didn't get touched. Joran, what's your touch? 15. Okay, so Joran and Yuhia. Uh, I, the page reset on me. I'm very slowly trying to load in. Okay. So yeah, I'm still get on that, like, roll 20 loading screen bit and... I get to some of the drop downs, it's just opening up anything is a bitch. Okay, finally loaded in. Mm -hmm. uh, touch AC of Yuhia is 22. 22, so Yuhia got touched. So Bosco was the only one that didn't get touched. I need a fortitude save. Need Cetro's Fortitude save. Was Beacon actually up? No, I just turned it off, so it's two less. So 
So Cetra takes 28, Reed's taking 157, Joran's taking 36, and Cetra's taking 24. As they disintegrate spell, uh, so Bosco and a few of you notice a, a, a glowing rune that starts to glow brighter, and then all of a sudden it shoots out five bolts that hit the five uh, that hit four of you and it misses you here narrowly. No, it, it hit me. It missed Bosco narrowly. Oh, yeah. Bosco. Sorry, right, Bosco. So. Also, side note, is this a mythic effect? Yes. Okay. So, I'm going to go with um, the second one is going to be um, you here. Second Cetra. Okay. Get my things out of row. And uh, around the corner, you see this uh, this uh, demonic mass. It goes chit chit chit, and you see it like run away. Well, it seems we're not really quite welcome here. I may need a little bit of healing. By the way, did you get that uh, 52 that I gave you earlier? After the fight? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A whole bunch of healing after every fight. Did not realize that. No. Okay. 52, you said? Yes. I think Reed's more the one that needs help. Reed, Reed's missing half of his side right now. <laughs> Ow. He looks a little ashen. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's uh let's fix that up, shall we? Yes, let's let's do that, please. That'd be great. Thank you. Drone puts a little band-aid on half of uh, Reed. <laughs> wow. A little band-aid? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 15? 150. That's a little better. Thank you. Bosco looks around to see what caused okay. this. You see a burnt out rune that's at the end of the street. It's welcoming like that. that oh, I hope that's situation. not typical. I didn't even get a chance to look around. Yeah, we might need to be on our toes from now on. Uh. All right, so um, after you guys heal up a little bit and you're able to kind of find a more centralized place where there's a lot of demons of all kinds running around, are you guys going to hide who you guys are or what are you guys going to do? Depends on the populace. Are there any other non-demons around? This is entirely chaotic demons of all kinds. In contrast to the, the city that you saw before, this is a very decrepit place that is just writhing in evil. That There seems to be fights all over the place in this open courtyard of, I guess you could call it a market. Um, it looks more like a slaughterhouse than... Uh, an open slaughterhouse than anything. Cetra, heal an additional 32. Tunnel energy. Okay. Yeah, everybody's going to get an extra 32 hit points. Hmm. Any ideas how we should uh, hide, perhaps? I don't have any magics of that nature natively. Oh, 
if these, these are most demons can see through illusions. I don't know if there's anything magical that I can enact to disguise our presence. Well, I think it's mainly more powerful ones that tend to uh, see through illusions. Invisibility, on the other hand, most of them can see through. I mean, if we had something else to disguise us with, I could probably disguise us, but even then it'd probably be no guarantee. Oh, I can I can provide certain magical disguises, but and that's not something we should 100% rely on. And Reed will proceed to cast a series of disguise spells as soon as I remember what the hell the thing is called. Disguise other? I think there's a higher level version of that. That's a little more concrete. I'm just trying to remember what the hell it's called. Seeming? I think that might be too high. Checking. The downside to having access to every fucking spell. Uh, seeming is a fifth level spell, and you can affect one creature per two caster levels. Um, that's tall. Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. Thank you. Uh, so Reed ca uh, burns a mythic point to cast seeming upon the group, which acts as the sky's self, uh, and lasts twelve hours. Okay, what are you seeming? I'd like to make us look like fly demons. Okay. So you're just going to look like Kaloxuses? Kaloxi? Yes. yes. Since okay. they are known to be both martially and magically adept, it would not be out of character for us. Okay, so all five of you currently look like Kaloxi. Kaloxis is Kalox. I don't really know what the <laughs> plural would be. I keep trying to think of a good joke, but I can't make one good enough for something about, you know, Shadow of the Kaloxi. <laughs> as long as you don't start calling us a clan. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we'll uh, proceed and. Uh... So who wants to be our face when we're asking around? Well, don't I could probably do it. Never been one to talk. Uh, to small talk. Uh, Moscow, yes. Good. All right, Moscow, All right. go for it. All right, let's get our story straight right now. What are we looking for? Uh, the, uh, the prison. Wherever they keep their most important prisoners. Like the Herald. I was about to say either that or we could uh, ask around for like the big players. See if we could uh, either endear or interrogate. Endear ourselves to them or interrogate them. Yes. Also that uh, uh, they might have more readily available rumors of the location of that great worm that we heard of. Oh yes, uh, the father of worms? Yes, uh, something like that. Okay. Um, that's uh, so, Bosco, you're going to be a diplomacy um, for gathered information. All right. Okay. I'm a bard, I'm good at that. Good job. All right. Um, so, um, let's see. So you spend uh, three hours trying to like avoid anybody that um, you think could have true seeing to uh, get rid of your. Basically, they would see through your disguise. Um, 
and you locate some of the some denizens that might be a little bit better at uh, who you're going to uh, actually get information from, and uh, you find a, a, another set of uh, of Kalaxi demons that uh, like fives mm, mm, worms. Mm. Let's see if I can actually remember exactly the functionality of it. Oh, yes. Father Worms sat the lightless maze. You have, to, you have to go to there, to the lightless maze, to get to the Father Worms. He, he, he doesn't like it when other people visit him, though. Hmm, good to know. All right, Bosco will relay this information. This is, why do you want the father of worms? It's. Uh, I'm not well, sure. We could tell you, but we'd have to kill you. Mm. You weird demons. For the record, Bosco's talking back exactly the way they are talking to us, but I can't do the voice, so... Okay, that's fine. Mm. Let's see. In a, in a whisper to, to Bosco, ask if there's any other big players in town. Bosco, can... give me a disguise, yeah. Yeah, it kind of shrugs and and walks off. To be honest, I wasn't expecting him to ask why. <laughs> oh goodness! I'm afraid a minute to fly. <laughs> it's a, it's a mini flying. B rated movie, the son of the fly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so maybe we can find one of the more uh, important demons around here. You know, like a, an hierarchy of power, per se. If we defeat and humble one of them, maybe they'll more, be more amenable to, with their information. Have we considered going up? looking around. You learn that it's very dangerous to start flying upward. Yes. I've been avoiding it quite poignantly. Yeah. The the thing that you notice around here is that despite most of the creatures that you see around here capable of flying at will, no one is flying. Got it. Perhaps we should continue asking around. Maybe there's more information to be gleaned. They told us to find this Sorry. lightless maze, but they didn't tell us where it was. Okay. Great, Bosco will ask around to try to figure out where this thing is. Okay. Give me a diplomacy check.
So you spend the next uh, two hours kind of, again, trying to avoid any demons that might have true sight available to them um, constantly. And um, then their um, buzzing in your ear is, um, is this creature that you probably recognize from a little way back when. Let's see if I can get it. It's a single one. It's flying in your ear. And it says... Let's see if I can find one size. Oh god, those little things. There are moments when I really appreciate the depravity of Paizo's artists. <laughs> They're disturbed individuals and bless them for it. <laughs> This is you. You are one of the not with Baphomets, are you not? Oh, yeah, I totally am. Who's asking? This I. I represent Vibscobles or. I'm sorry, what? I represent Vibscavor. I believe he's trying. Spelling on that. I believe he's trying to say Vescavor. Damn that name. Goddamn, Paizo. Come on. <laughs> Verbovazor. <laughs> okay. Who, who might be Verbovazor? Verbovazor would like to see you. Might as well. Hmm. I don't suppose know. we can indulge him. Uh, so demons are always in conflict. Uh, we might take advantage of this and share a common cause, I think. At least temporarily. I've always wanted to say this. Take us to your leader! <laughs> so, um... Yeah, he, he will. He will, um lead you around um lead you on a very um weird path like you'd expect that it would be kind of in more of a straight line but um it, it seems to be like you go through alleyways and then you go into main streets and then back into alleyways and to the left and then you take two lefts and you're like wait how did we take two lefts and we're end up why didn't we end up right where we started and then you take another right and then you're like, okay, I thought that was a door right there. That's worse than trying to navigate Sigil. Oh, goodness. Are we hopelessly irrevocably lost? It it seems that this this thing's not very lost. It makes immediate turns. It's not even like really hesitating. It's waiting for you all to kind of follow it, um, just flapping along. Um, it's also really odd that this thing actually speaks in the first place. Um, from what you guys know, is these things, these chittering swarms, usually are insane and don't have the capability of formulating complete sentences, much less being able to navigate. Uh, 
I needn't remind everyone to be very cautious. This is an unusual situation. Yeah, is there anything we can discern about this thing? Like, is it going to try to cause us harm? Is there anything we can uh, pick up on? So far, it's just, it's been uh, traveling ahead of you pretty much about 20 feet, 15 to 20 feet. And waiting, like, if you get too far behind, it kind of flaps and waits to get, like, within 10 feet and continues moving to kind of, like, a little escort mission kind of guy that just continues... Uh, walking along um so far he hasn't really done anything except for just lead you along each of the alleyways and and different directions that he's taken it seems to be a simple thing we might as well follow it to the end What other choice do we have? Right. Um. So, uh, you all. Um, let me do this real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and. you guys over to this map here and um so the city's narrow alleyways end here in an open area not quite 50 feet across the reason for the opening is apparent enough for what is what what is have been an empty lot instead is nearly consumed by a crumbling sink the sides drop away steeply into a tangled mound of rubble filth and bones some 30 feet below so when the, the Vescovor um, gets to the end of this, he flies down to um, he flies down into the sinkhole. And um, coming out of the sinkhole, you see this. If I can get it. I believe. Oh my god, what the hell is that? And these um these thousands of of Vescovor uh Vescovors kind of coalesce um onto this little lip on the end into what looks to be like a large humanoid shape. And I will drop that creature on this map. This is some extreme levels of fuckery. I would really love to see an animation of this. Oh god, yeah. just imagine if this into the game. To be like one of those things where like... Oh god, like... I don't even know what comes to mind. Something where it's just lots of small bits of innocuous things that just happen to operate as one mouth. And and the um, swarm humanoid kind of gives this little bowing motion to the flapping demons, and you just hear like this disconcordant set of voices coming from like all of these different uh, creatures. It says, "I am Vebskvor." Hello. Uh, is there anything in lore or histories or research that would have revealed the, the who or what this is? Um, I mean, you can give a knowledge planes. Holy oh, shit! It'd actually be Bosco and a knowledge roll. I took ten. <laughs> Uh, 
This is a a, a Vescovore swarm, but it, it's it's very odd that the Vescovore swarm is so organized. Um, it's actually a very odd occurrence for these creatures to be able to organize in such a way to even provide even speech. Uh, it says, "Listen, meets the things. I hear the voice of the ages. You be not fools, then leave this place." Do not return, for wander into the labyrinth is to die. Do not seek the prison. Do not approach the mountains. Worship the horned lord. Embrace the greater powers that surround you. For to do otherwise means only that your bones will join a million others. And Lord Baphomet cowers in his tower, and you openly walk in his street. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. It wouldn't so, be Go ahead. You will help us then overthrow Baphomet. Mm -hmm. Maybe. You have not yet proven to Vebskvor if you are worthy to receive my aid. What it is it that you have done, Baphomet has changed. He killed one of his daughters. Then he himself was slain. And what were you doing trying to assault the Baphomet? He got in our way. We also managed to anger another demon lord by stepping onto her plane. Hmm. You killed one of his current avatars that makes him vulnerable. Perfect time to aid us in defeating him for good. Vebskavor hmm. knows all lots of things about this place. What were you doing trying to attack Baphomet? Technically, it was Nocticula that attacked him. We simply killed his daughter, who was trying to... Uh, gain an advantage in uh, the Midnight Isles. It's been rumored that Baphomet was on the Night Isles with something, but it's been very secretive despite my... He kind of extends his hand out a little bit and a few demon, a few of the, uh, the Vescovores kind of fly away a little bit and then it pulls it back to him my spies looking all around for for such things hmm. suppose that gives a new meaning to the phrase of, to it out. suppose you give a new meaning to the phrase a fly on the wall <laughs> yes indeed i am legion been here for generations of your meat bags if you've been here so long, then perhaps you might know something. We seek where he has taken the Herald. We have heard that it may be a place known as the Electable... I really hope I said that right. Electable Prison. 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 Yep, Intellectable Prison. Might you know where that is? The Intellectable Prison is located in the Breathless Mountains. But be wary, this region changes, and you have to at least bend there before you can reach there. We've also heard that a creature known as the Father of Worms lays in, I think that uh, Colossus said, the Lightless Maze, correct? Yes, the lightless maze is where the acidic caustic demon lies. 
good. He does not appreciate visitors. Good to know. It is so far eaten 700 of you meat bags. And where might the lightless maze be? It is located beyond the mazes to the east, or is it to the west? The maze realm changes all of the time. I know it. How are we to get there, then? You follow the rules of the maze, and you navigate them. Those that navigate the mazes are rewarded with their location of desire. Would you partake in, uh, would you provide us these rules so that we may follow them? Hmm, I can provide some information. Rule one is you shall not try to violate the walls of the maze, or you shall be trapped in the ivory maze. Rule two, those that have already been to a location may visit it again if they have sufficient powerful magics. And rule three, those that are proceeding through the maze shall not destroy the walls or the walls will trap themselves around the violator. Good to know. All of the mazes have a solution if you work hard enough. The mazes have their own rules against the demons and creatures that proceed through them. They must always have an exit, even if that exit is very difficult to locate. And is there anything we should know about the prison itself? Prison is Baphomet's prize for escaping his first prison. He uses it as his home, his mantle, and as such, because of it, he has fortified it with many creatures that could utterly obliterate you at your very core. Lovely. And have you heard of any recent additions to this prison? Creatures of importance. Hmm. There is rumors of a creature that is glowed gold that screamed throughout the realm. It was felt by all, but no one has been privy to what it was. suspect that's our herald. Herald, you say? Herald of whom? I am a day. <laughs> Baphomet has captured the herald of Amama Day. Amama Day is... Not as wise as she seems. Even a god can't plan for everything. And neither can a demon lord. Apparently. Oh, I must thank you for this information. You've been most enlightening. Indeed. I, I 
will be here in case you need more information. Hopefully, I do not see you die too quickly. Thank you. And we, uh, we wish you well. And with that, I think we should all take our leave. Unless anyone else has questions. And with that, the the mm. mass breaks up and then proceeds through the cracks of the um, of the the sinkhole. All right, so I guess we just follow the maze. All right. Um, so we're going to do is what do you guys want to do first? I vote heading for the lightless caverns. Take on this worm fellow. Agreed. Okay. In order to actually get out of the town, I am going to need a navigation, which requires... Survival? Survival, yes. We need to use the Cetra positioning system. Okay. All right, so you're able to navigate out of the city after the rest of the day expires, and um, you're able to proceed into the area between mazes. All right, so do we want to rest here, or maybe go back to the uh, the base camp and rest there? Because by what that uh, by what uh. Ver Verbazor said is that once we have visited a place like where we're standing, we can teleport back here. Yes, yeah, so once I've once I've mapped an area to my memory, I can return there uh, with relative ease. It's still powerful magic, but capable of it several times a day if needed. Excellent. After well, I always have govern some have of my ability. strength for fights, however. I always have the ability to move us to a location once a day. Mm -hmm. That is very true. Also, be right back. I'm going to use the restroom. Okay, and so, what are you guys doing? Uh, do we know the direction to the Breathless Mountains? Um, the direction to the Breathless Mountains changes all of the time. Okay, just like Basic, the direction. Every yeah, basically, we just have to follow the the maze with the intent of going there. And as long as we don't break the rules, we should eventually get there. Yeah. Oh, okay. What we find on the way, you know, who knows, but... I remember, no one think of any Stay Puft Marshmallow. <laughs> right. <laughs> Too late. I just, I just popped in my head. You popped into your head, what? What did you do, Ray? I, I, saw I just thought of the, thing, the most, the weakest thing that I could think of. The, thing that... the question is, uh, uh, against, against him, would touch attacks be more effective or less effective? <laughs> more effective. Remember, he's he's colossal. Easy to hit, like, hard know, to penetrate. Very, do boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. All right, so um, 
Yeah, so you guys are going to head towards the Breathless Mountains, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So what we're going to do is you can give me two D100 rolls. I'll get it. I want to do one. I, okay, so 11 and 29. So which one do you want to pick? Personally, I like aiming for the middle of the middle of the group as much as possible. So twenty nine. So twenty nine. Mm-hmm. This unusual maze consists of a tangle of thin, spindle-like towers that stretch in all directions. The ground is far below, shrouded in mist, while the towers themselves are connected by tangles of bridges and stone buttresses. A fall, f- a fall from the towers, uh, probably could hurt. Um, there is no access to the ground below these towers, and the interiors are widely divergent. Uh, so, um, let's see, I need to determine. Okay, that'll be interesting. All right, so what is your guys' plans for when you're navigating? Because this is going to take multiple days for you to navigate each section. How many days in total? Um, so far it's going to take multiple days um, for just this section alone. I think we're all pretty single-minded on finding the Herald as soon as possible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if if it's days worth of travel, the vast majority of our buffs will not be active. Mm-hmm. All right. So, everyone so knows. Um, the thing is, is that what I'm going to have to do is how this works is that there's a certain amount of navigation DC. And just so we can kind of uh, speed up the um, process and make sure I'm not really rolling things too much, I can kind of set them up and kind of a knock them out one at a time kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I need a navigation DC. So we're going to basically what's going to happen is that you're going to go through like two sections and the next session I'm going to go through the results of those sections. So that way we can immediately start into completing those results of the combats and any kind of things that you encounter along the way really quickly. And that way you're not waiting for me to like go through roles and get all the things set up. Okay. Yeah, so sounds good. We're going to go with... Um, I'm going to need a survival check. Uh, it's important to, for me to note with buff-wise, is this before or after like half a day, day of traveling? This is after a day of traveling. So you go to sleep and then okay. you're, uh, you wake up and then um, you're in this... So you're going to be in this section for three days. So I'm going to make okay. some notes. So make sure you guys have uh, Mythic Heroism turned off before you roll. And how many did you say you need? So you're able to go through that. I'm going to need two D100 rolls again. Bosco's turn. I should have rolled separately. Oh, too late. 62 and 57. Which one do you want? Bosco will draw a card to determine. I have returned. Oh, that's not helpful. (laughs) I got a true neutral card. Oh, fantastic. (laughs) Um, One's closer to neutral. 62. There we go. So the uh, second one, the second maze that you locate is called the Plain of Bones. It's filled with white soil, pale grasses, and winds that constantly kick up grit and clattering bones. These plains are unpleasant to walk on. The sky above bears no stars, moons, or sun, and is instead a pale, featureless, ivory expanse. The walls of this maze are 20 foot high, heaps of bones in some places, and equally high tangles of ivory grass in others. Find out how long you're going to be in here. Okay, 10. Okay. 
Okay, and then I need another two more D one hundred rolls. Who's gonna roll that one? That sure would you like to roll two D one hundreds? Do you want 51 or 33? Mm, 33. Okay. So you enter the ivory maze, and it is a classic maze, dungeon-like tangle of rooms with tunnels, walls, floors, and ceilings paved in countless bones. The tunnels range from 5 to 10 feet wide, with numerous rooms and junctions and other chambers often set up by doors both secret and obvious. The ivory maze is lit by a soft, only subtly light that is an obvious source. Demons and minotaurs are most common denizens of the maze realm, while many believe the underlying reality in which other raised realms build. Visitors of the realm... Uh, okay, yeah, okay. So let's find out that one. Does I detect a mechanical keyboard? Yes. Two more D100 rolls. You're here. Alrighty. Uh, let's go for the 90. The vile swarms, demonic flies, frocks, hezrus, fiendish dire crocodiles, and all other manner of swamp and creatures that fill the sucking mire make it one of the least pleasant of the maze realms. This maze consists of a winding mass of swampy paths connecting muddy hillocks, all separated by swaths of still, dark water. Most of these pools are effectively bottomless, but some turn into endless morasses of cold mud after 30 to 40 feet. The mire is densely forested with mangrove trees and the like, and their thickly overhanging branches form a solid canopy 20 to 30 feet above. Attempts to climb through or otherwise penetrate the cavity send the cheater back to blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, guys. I picked the nastiest one. <laughs> now, is that 26 days? Are you rolling for? Yes. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> okay. Um why is it always that? Okay. Alright, two more D one hundred rolls. Whose turn is it next? I Reed? think it's I think it's back to me. We'll go though. Um, re-roll that 10. Okay, so 37 or 78? Uh, 37, closest to neutral. Actually, uh, I'm sorry, uh, re-roll that again. You've already been to that one. 75 or 78? 75 then. 
so uh, the river spores. It's like the meandering river. This river twists and turns eternally. Yet like that of the river, the river spores is located eternally underground. Its banks are riddled with secondary cave mazes. The river averages more at a mere 15 feet deep with 20 to 30 feet of clearance above. Beyond the turgid waters, foul fungus grows in profusion here, and the air is thick with spores. Many of these spores are deadly, and even when they aren't, breathing creatures are automatically sickened in this maze. It's a poison effect. So if you're immune to poison, you're fine. Um, the river water is corrosive. Although I think the life bubble would per uh, protect us from the air-based stuff. Hopefully you have enough for 10 days. Read. Yeah, oh, that's shit. that's a super long duration. Okay, so I got all of those. Um, so after that, uh, it'll automatically put you guys at the Breathless Mountain. So you guys will be proceeding three days through the Endless Towers, ten days through the Plain of Bones, uh, one, two, three, four, eight days of the Ivory Maze, 26 days through the Sucking Mire, and 10 days through the River of Spores. Basically two months. What was the second to last one, just before 10? Sucking Mires. The day's number. Oh, let, me, let me do this. Just looking for a total days. Darn, your uh, headband's almost assuredly going to be done. Nice. Yay! I gotta do a lot of a lot of rolling. Well, that's fine because, like I said, I was going to fast forward, make sure I get these rolls out of the way, so that way I can roll them um, when in between sessions and get anything that's encounter-wise built um, in between sessions. So that way we can just like boom, 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 knock them out as quickly as possible. Yep, yep. Um, and uh, yeah, that should be. Fine. Cool. Um, we'll if sit. we are closing up shop for the night, Jorn Bosco, can I get a charge count on any wands that you are carrying? So that in uh, roll twenty chat, like cure mod X charges, cure light X charges, etc. This is almost going to do better for us than that little bit of downtime that we had in regards to re getting to recharge our stuff. Basically. Um, how, does anyone have any uh, open and uh, at liquid assets in cash? Uh, I got 6,000 cash. Oh, sorry, 16,000 in cash. Okay. I have 17,000. You have 7,000? How much, Sucha? Seven thousand something. Okay. Uh, I might uh, ask to write some IOUs to start a crafting project and pay you back after, if that's okay with folks. Sure. Bosco's has thirty-five k left over. It's fine by me. Cool. I have four coins, I don't use them, so it's fine. Just know that when making a loan with the Bank of Yuhia, uh, uh, any outstanding debts that are not paid in time, we will send the Inquisitors after you. <laughs> oh god, there's some history with Reed on those guys. <laughs> you might not want to do that. They will come back crispy. Well, who else do you think the Bank of Yuhia would hire as debt collectors? Clerics of Abadar. Exactly, the tax men. <laughs> yeah, we're done for the night. Like I'm just rolling for stuff in the future. Okay. Uh, I'll roll my stuff after you finish your rolling because it's going to spam the hell out of chat when I do it. 
Okay. Yeah. All right, so it's... for those joining us this evening on the stream, thank you as always for putting up with our particular brand of bullshit. We shall see you next week. Bye.